Welcome to Lake Highlands United Methodist Church. We're glad to have you here for our Church at Home traditional edition this morning. My name is Pastor Andy Roberts, and I'm one of the associate pastors here. Our senior pastor, Jill Jackson Sears, will be sharing the message uh, just a little bit later this morning. Uh, We're so glad that you've joined us today, and especially if you're new and you're just coming to check us out, uh, there's a couple of ways that you can connect that we would ask you to do this morning. First of all, if if you haven't already checked in, uh, we would encourage you to do that by going to lhumc.com slash online worship and go ahead and check in and let us know you're here this morning and we'll follow up with you on that. Uh, additionally, if you would love to learn more information about our church, you can text the number 214-617-1350. Text the word loop to that number and you will be a part of a group that will send you information about the ongoing things in the life of Lake Highlands United Methodist Church. If you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook Live, we encourage you to to greet one another in the comments, uh, share any prayer requests that you might want to share at this time. A few announcements we want to share with you about some things that are happening in the life of our church. Uh, Wednesday Night Live, Uh, Wednesday Night Live prayer meeting will be this week at 6.30 p.m. We have daily devotions that are coming out from our staff almost every day, and those will be an encouragement to you. If you're not receiving those, you can sign up for that at lhumc.com. We have lots of discipleship opportunities online uh, for children, for youth, for men, for women, for adults. Many of our groups and classes are continuing to meet online. And so if you want to be a part of one of those, you want to continue to grow in Jesus Christ during this time, you can contact Gretel at lhumc.com and she will connect you with ways to do that. Or you can get on our website, lhumc.com slash groups. Uh, Feed Lake Highlands continues to receive donation for food distribution and you can drop all of those off. Uh, at uh, the new room. And if you get on Feed Lake Highlands uh, webpage, you'll be able to see all the items that they're asking for right now. And so we would encourage you to do that. You can drop all of that off at 10061 Whitehurst on Sundays between 12 and 1, as well as Mondays and Tuesdays between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. We're so glad that you're joining us for worship this morning. Would you join me in our call to worship? Let we who live with faith in God proclaim, Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust forever. Let we who trust in the Lord know that holy love surrounds us. God's protection will follow us throughout our days when we call out to the Lord. God is with us in every trial and temptation. Therefore, we will rejoice in the salvation of the Almighty. Raise your voices with me as we praise the Lord together.
join me in our opening prayer. O Lord, you have indeed carried me on your wings. And by your mercy, you have delivered me from sin and death. You have set me free from bondage. Even as I seek to live faithfully as a child of the new covenant, help me to live each day by grace. May I continue to ride on your wings as you guide and empower me to serve in every aspect of my life. All praise be to you, gracious Lord, because you carry me on your wings. Alleluia. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in God together as we recite our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We love to lift up the great things that God is doing in the life of Lake Highlands United Methodist Church. And one of the things that, that we are rejoicing in, even this morning, is our CCDC preschool program. As many of you know, CCDC has, has had to suspend their normal operations for the remainder of this year uh, in compliance with all that our schools are having to do right now. But that doesn't mean that they're not still ministering in, in incredible ways uh, using all these online resources. And so, so many of the teachers are reaching out to their students using their online lessons. They're experiencing Bible stories. They're having music time. They're encountering animals that belong to the teachers uh, during this time. Uh, one teacher even set up a hopscotch court in the front of her house so that children could come and jump safely on that hopscotch court. And so we're so thankful for our amazing teachers and staff of CCDC who continue to serve and minister to the children of our church in this time and in this season. And so your church is still ministering and we're still trying to serve, serve Christ to you and to our community in these ways. And so we would ask you in these moments, if you could take a couple of moments and, and give financially to our church, you can get on our website, uh, LHUMC, LHUMC.com slash give, uh, or you can write a check to our church. And so we thank you in advance for your generosity. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit and when I
scripture reading today comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 91, verses 1 through 7. I invite you to read along in your Bible, and if you're able, please stand for God's word. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us pray together. Most holy God, as the scripture is read and your word is proclaimed, open our hearts, our minds, our ears to what you need us to hear, that we might become the people you have created us to be. We lift up this prayer in Christ's holy name, and all of God's people together say, Amen. A cat died and went to heaven. When the cat arrived at the pearly gates, God met the cat there, and God said, You have been such a good cat throughout your earthly life. What can I give you? Name anything. The cat thought for a moment and said, well, you know, I lived with a very poor farming family and I always had to sleep on the hardwood floor. I would love a really nice fluffy pillow. So God said, say no more, and poof, there was a big fluffy pillow upon which the cat could sleep. About a week later, Six mice died and went to heaven, and God met them there at the pearly gates. God made the same offer to the mice that God made to the cat. And the mice thought about it for a minute, and they said, you know what? We spent our whole lives running. We were running from cats and from dogs and even from humans that that had brooms in their hands. We're tired of running. So if you could give us some roller skates, then we wouldn't have to run anymore. God said, say no more, and sure enough, every mouse was given a beautiful tiny set of roller skates for their feet. A few weeks went by, and God said, you know what, I'm going to go check on that cat, see how he's doing. So God went to the cat who was sleeping luxuriously on the big fluffy pillow and and God kind of shook the cat and the cat stretched and yawned and, and God said, so how do you like heaven? How's this working for you? And the cat said, this is the best. I am having the time of my life. You've given me this amazing pillow to sleep on and the meals on wheels that you send are fabulous. I know, it's a really bad joke, and you can groan because I can't hear you. And it made me giggle and think about what we believe about God. Do we believe that God is this gatekeeper in heaven? Do we believe that God is just this cosmic genie that fulfills our greatest desires? What do we believe about God? What do we expect about God? And what does God expect of us, especially in this very uncertain time? Today, we're going to be exploring one of the core beliefs of the Christian faith. And that is we believe in God as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who lives in covenant relationship with us that is grounded in promise. In fact, we see this promise starting from the very beginning of Scripture 
in the book of Genesis, as, as God creates covenant relationship with Noah and makes the promise that God will never destroy the earth again. As scripture continues, we find another covenant relationship established by God with Abraham, and it's grounded in promise. God tells Abraham, if you will go and and leave everything you know to this land that you have no idea what it will be like, what it will look like, if you will do this, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. Then later, as we continue through Scripture, we find covenant promise once again, this relationship offered to us as Jesus in the Gospel of John chapter 14 tells his disciples that he will be leaving, but he will send to them the Holy Spirit, the advocate, who will teach them and remind them of everything that Jesus told them. And sure enough, as we get through the book of Acts, and that's part of our Bible reading in these last few weeks, we find the Holy Spirit coming to the people on Pentecost through wind and flame, and Peter having to interpret to them what was happening in that moment as the Holy Spirit descended. He says in Acts 2.39, For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away. And so we believe in God who offers covenant relationship to us that is grounded in promise. Today we're going to look in Psalm 91 of of what we can expect from God and what God expects from us in this covenant relationship. Here we see God as both promise maker, but also a promise keeper in whom we can trust. I invite you to open up your Bible to Psalm 91 if you haven't already, and and we're going to hone in on the first two verses because they are so rich. Now in this psalm, we're given this beautiful image of God as refuge, God as shelter. But in these first two verses, We are given four names for God, four Hebrew names that tell us quite a bit about who God is and and the very character of God. The psalm begins in this way. You who live in the shelter of the Most High. Here we have the first Hebrew name for God, and that is Elyon. Elyon. This name for God describes God as being all-powerful, the God who oversees heaven and earth. Then as the scripture passage continues, we get to the second Hebrew name for God. As the psalm continues, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty. This Hebrew name for God is El Shaddai, El Shaddai. And this name first pops up in Genesis 17 as that covenant relationship is being established between God and Abraham. In 17 verse 1, God introduces God's self in this way. He says, I am God Almighty, El Shaddai. Walk before me and be blameless. So here we have El Yon, God of strength. And we have El Shaddai, God of grace, God of mercy, God in relationship. The psalm continues, We'll say to the Lord, I will say to the Lord. Now you'll notice if you're looking at your Bible, the word Lord is completely capitalized. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That shows us that this name for God in Hebrew is Yahweh or Jehovah. We find this name for God first show up in the book of Exodus as covenant relationship is being established with Moses. Jehovah, Yahweh, God of faithfulness. 
We continue in the psalm as we read, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. This last name for God is Elohim, the God who creates, the God who shapes and forms us out of the dirt and blows the breath of life into us. And so in these first two verses, we get a very deep, rich picture of who God is and why we can trust God. God is El Yon, Most High, El Shaddai, Almighty, a God of grace. God is Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, faithful. God Elohim, creator. This is the God in whom we can trust in all times and all circumstances. This is not only a promise maker, but a promise keeper. This is what we can expect of God when we are in covenant relationship. But what does God expect of us? We find later on in this psalm the answer to that question in verse 14. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. You and I, in this covenant relationship with God that's grounded in promise, we are expected to love God. So what does that look like? Jesus teaches us in the Gospel of Mark chapter 12. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If we want to know how to love God well, we simply look towards Jesus, who didn't just teach these things, but actually lived it. As he showed us in his life, the way that he would get away and pray, the way he talked about the kingdom of God, the way that he healed and forgave, in his willingness to show that love all the way to the cross and the empty tomb so that you and I may no longer be enslaved by sin and death, but set free. Jesus not only teaches us how to love God, but he shows us and he wants us to walk with him, to learn how to love God well with all our heart, soul, mind, strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. And this is such a unique time, isn't it? I mean, before all of this happened, it seemed like we didn't have enough time. Now all we have is time. And so why don't we use that time well to learn from Jesus how to love God and love our neighbor with all that we are and all that we have? Let us spend time intentionally in Scripture getting to know Jesus, learning from him, becoming a part of a Zoom discipleship group, praying, worshiping. And then as we grow in our relationship with Christ, may that love for him overflow into our relationships with others so that we might love them as God loves us. Now, I know that looks a little bit different these days. I've decided I don't like the term socially distant. I think we should be physically distant because that is one way that we can love our neighbor, but this is not the time to be socially distant. We need to reach out to one another. We need to call our neighbors and our friends and check up on them. We need to send notes and cards. Maybe this is the time to tell our story of faith to our children, our grandchildren, a neighbor, a coworker. Maybe this is the time to step out of our comfort zone, loving God and loving neighbor well. These words from Psalm 91 remind us that, that God wants to be our refuge, our shelter. In this time of, of sheltering in place, the sticks and bricks are not enough. What we need is a relationship with God, our promise maker, the God of strength, the God of grace, 
God of faithfulness, our creator God who wants to be in relationship with us, who keeps these promises that he has made long ago and who loves us. We can trust him. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we praise you. For you are El Yon, El Shaddai, Jehovah, Elohim. You are God of faithfulness and love, power and might. You not only make promises, but you keep them. Help us to love you with all that we are and all that we have. Help us to love our neighbors well. We lift up these prayers and our lives to you in the holy and powerful name of Jesus and all of God's people together say, amen. It's a funny thing that I'm feeling I know my season's about to change I've been praying and dreaming And I know it's time to step out and live by faith And every word that you say Says never fail. On this journey a while now, and through countless valleys and rugged peaks, developed strength and endurance, and learned to know. Says never fail. I'm hanging on every word. Lord, please speak. I am listening. Your voice within me whispering and telling me the way. Every promise, and every promise you make will not fail and won't be delayed. Your promises never fail. No, no. Your promises never fail. No. Your promises. Pastor Jill just talked about in her message about how God is sovereign and mighty, 
gracious and is our creator and revealed most clearly to us in the person of Jesus. And he keeps every word, every promise that he makes to us. Let us go now to this good and gracious God with our prayers. Would you pray with me? Together, let us pray for the people of Lake Highlands United Methodist Church. Let us pray for those who suffer and those who are in trouble. Let us pray for the concerns of the Lake Highlands community or wherever you might live. Let us pray for the world, its people, its leaders. Let's pray for the worldwide church, its leaders, its members, and its mission. And finally, let us pray for the communion of saints, those who have gone on before us and those who are still with us. Let us lift them up. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us join together in praying the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. And God will raise you up on equal swings. Receive this word of blessing. May we go forth in peace. Having encountered and experienced the love and grace of God in Jesus Christ, may we go forth to love him with all that we are and all that we have, and to love our neighbor as ourself. We go forth in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people together say, Amen. Go in peace.